All right, check, check, check. All right. The question is, can I hear myself? You guys hear anything? Anybody? Oh, I can hear myself. So I'm really, uh, I always check that because I did start a stream one time where the first like 10 or 15 minutes was uh, uh, no audio. So I always like to check that. Okay, so uh, for anyone that caught my stream last week, um, the uh, 30 second review, um, I was trying to new help desk software and it didn't meet my needs. So I uh, decided to move on, try something different. Um, I'm trying to keep this low budget. <laughs> so the time tracking was not available on the free tier. Uh, so I've moved to a different one and we're going to try building an API for this, or sorry, not building an API, building a module to work with the API on this one. Uh, so uh, quick disclaimer, uh, I'm not endorsing this product, not being endorsed by a sponsor or whatever. Uh, just something I found, they have a free tier um, and they have an API. That was really my criteria. <clears throat> Keeping it that simple. Uh, so. Uh, for today, what I want to be able to do to be consider this a success, since I realized I really wasn't clear about what I considered a success last time, um, is uh, essentially to be able to streamline my invoicing so I can just run a script, get all my invoicing stuff um, out of the help desk and not have to run a report, manually bill it, yada, yada, yada. So I've, I've broken it out into steps here, so pretty simple. Um, the API has a method for retrieving the key through the API. Oh, shoot. Hold on a second. No, I had someone else just tell me I was supposed to be in another meeting right now. Oh, no. Okay. Give me a second, guys. It was a day confusion. Okay, kind of like me last week. <laughs> okay, so this API has a way using the username and password to retrieve an API key. So I want to implement that, and then of course authenticate. Um, and I want to be able to retrieve tickets and then associate tickets to accounts. And the accounts uh, in this software is uh, clients or departments or what's what they refer to as accounts. And then of course be able to track time work. So. Oh, uh, first thing we will start with is I'll show you their beautiful documentation, which is moderately okay. Um, it's been a little confusing for me, but I've gotten started with it, so I guess it works. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so you typically I start with an invoke dash, and then uh, in this case Sherpa Desk API call, uh, but. Since this platform has a way to use your username and password to get your API key, we're actually going to start with a get Sherpa Desk API key function. Uh, not Sherpa, Sherpa Desk API key. Uh, and this, uh, let's take a look here. Um, oh, oh, okay, right here. Uh, pass your email address and password. So. Uh, this one just needs um, stream email. Whoa. Uh, oh, actually, let's do it. Okay, sorry, I gotta I gotta take care of getting this meeting rescheduled. Um, I got the day correct this time, but the other person did not. All right, so I'm actually going to do uh, do two options here uh, to accept input. I might be getting too complicated to start out with. We'll find out. 
parameter, parameter set name. So I'm going to do email only or credential. Oh, I forget. Is the credential type, is it just credential or is it PS credential? <clears throat> I'm looking at the PS credential. Okay. I want to make sure I get the type name right here. Okay. Parameter. Okay. Uh, and we'll call it default parameter set name equals email only. And I'm just selecting that because that's what I expect that I'll probably be using personally, but I will. Uh, add support for both of them, obviously. Okay, so uh, so we need to be able to build a credential if we don't already have one. So if ps commandlet dot parameter set name yes equals whoa, uh, email only, then we'll prompt. Let's see, get credential. Oh, come on. <clears throat> Username, and this part's the the boring part of building an API module. It's all the previous the uh, legwork ahead of time. I, and you know, I probably could have done this ahead of time, but it's I don't know. It's more fun to do it, even if no one's talking to me, because I can actually have a commentary about it. And you know, my next door neighbors don't think I'm weird because I'm live streaming. Cool. Uh, so message um, retrieving API key from. Okay. Ah, and you know what? I'll even just go credential equals sweet. Okay, so so then I don't have to have another if the parameter set name is something different. So I'll just work with that credential object. And uh, so we need to base64 encode username colon password. Okay, so the cool part is I figured we'd do base be doing some base 64 encoding so I just copied that ahead of time okay so I'm gonna make this a string let's call it up for user password all right so the up string equals let's see I actually don't remember how to get is it get network credential okay dot username Get network credential dot username. And then I can never remember if the uh, colon actually needs to be escaped or not. So we're going to escape it just in case. <laughs> um, and then we need the password Oof. dot secure. I don't remember how to hear it. You know what? I can actually zoom this in a little bit for you guys. Um, I don't remember how to get the password of a credential object. So I'm refreshing memory on the fly. Go to secure password. Okay, it's convert from secure string, right? Yep. Cred password. Okay. I obviously. Am lacking some knowledge here. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Sweet scripting guy blog. And if someone wants to jump in and save me some time, I am always open to that. Let's see. So we did the convert from secure string. Oh, what? Oh, so it's in the network credential. Oh, really? Just dot password? Oh, my goodness. Okay. That was something that I just uh, should have. Let's see. Network credential dot password. 
can now divert. Oh, sweet. Okay, so the password I put in here was just test. <laughs> uh, okay, sweet. Oh, that's a... Oh my goodness, I've got convert from secure string in there still. Okay. Okay, okay, sweet. And so we'll say credential dot get network credential dot. Okay, so that is the username and password to get our uh, API key. Uh, and so, let's see, convert, and then we need to build a header equals uh, I think it's just authorization. Authorization equals basic. Oh, I didn't actually assign this to a variable. Encoded UP equals. So encoded UP. Okay, so let's just uh, check the uh, basic space. Okay, sweet. So now we should be able to say invoke. Rest method method get URI is I believe it was a special URI. So uh, so we're so it's not it's slash login and the rest of the API calls are all slash something else. Oh maybe not. Slash okay, okay, so actually um, what I'm going to do to just test this, um, so typically uh, for the rest, for building an API or building a module around REST APIs, um, I like to have one command that does all the work around doing the calls and receiving a response. And I thought I thought it would they would have like a so typically the api.com slash they have like a version number or something and they appear not to have that interesting okay all right so i guess i could integrate this with uh the standard uh invoke rest method or the standard invoke api call uh, like i typically do all right that was slash i guess copy and paste what am i doing <laughs> Headers is header. Why am I getting a red underline encoded equals? Did I screw something up? Yeah, I did. There you go. Okay. So the response, supposedly, is going to be API token. Okay, so good news is I can easily reset my API tokens. So if I accidentally show it on the stream, I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so let's... Let's try, but I'm I'm going to mask it inside of a variable. Git Sherpa. Oh my goodness, can't type. Okay, API key, email. Put in my email in here. Then it should prompt me for a password. Oh. I don't know if I remember my password or not. Okay. Interesting. So we got a nice response. So what that m what that means is I'm guessing that they want an accept equals is it content slash JSON. Um, I'm going to so typically they'll have this part documented in their API, but you notice that that they don't actually have that in here let's they did have another link for something else but like I said their API is kind of unfortunately documented um, and here I'm actually I guess I'm looking at I'm looking at the the module I worked on last week um, but I don't have the accept header in here but I'm positive so I did another module that I'm fairly certain yes content type and accept. So I'm just going to copy that straight out of there and paste it into here. Okay, so let's try that again. 
I'm assuming the password was correct. We'll find out. Oh, okay. API token is null. That's not true. At least I, I would assume it's not true. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, well, authenticate. Response 200 okay. Paste your email address and password. This is the same API token you can get in the web app, which I've already gotten. Hold on a second, let me try something. We're not actually sending any JSON data. So, nope, didn't make a difference. API token is null. Hmm. Okay. I wonder if this needs to be turned on or something. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna log into the portal. I gotta do this off screen because it's pulled up my profile which has my uh, API token in it, which I'm trying to avoid, but I think what'll probably end up happening is I may end up displaying it like last time. And we will just, I will just have to reset it anyway. So I'm pulling up the settings. Uh, API keys, supposedly on. Is there a setting to turn the API on and off? Sorry, my wife is texting me. Nothing immediately important. Um, okay. This just got really boring because that didn't work and I'm very sad. I thought there would be a... A setting for it or something. Apparently not. Okay. Well, the good news, well, actually, I don't know if it's good news. Um, the luckle, luckily, I can still get my API key f from their portal, uh, which I have already done um, because I actually anticipated having issues getting this to work. Um, okay, so let's just uh, quick review. So headers is just authorization, basic space. I just wanna make sure that I didn't miss something really easy. Uh, so under header authorization, basic space, oh. <laughs> Single quotes versus double quotes, wow. Okay, that was pretty bad, okay. That's why the API token was returned as null because I incorrectly, I didn't send my username password, oh my goodness. Wow, okay, that was pretty bad. Uh, we're gonna try this again. Oh, okay, sweet. So I think I might just have to, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks for laughing along with me. <laughs> uh, okay, so there's a number of ways we can do this to keep the API key from being displayed. Um, I'm going to take this off screen just really quick. I want to look at that R variable. Okay, the API token's in there. I'm just going to give up on hiding this because it's really easy for me to reset and I don't have any production data in here yet. So I gave up, there's the API token I'm working with for today. I will reset it as soon as we're done. Uh, but yeah, so you can see, well, let me, let me for, for clear that out so you can actually, if you want if you want to see the response there, it's just uh, one object with one property called the API token. So that's my API token. Okay, sweet, so this works, this works, believe it or not, this works. Okay, so uh, get Sherpa password. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this and commit this uh, just so we don't lose it. Um, now retrieves API key. Yay. Okay, cool. And for anybody that wants to see the code. Oh, yeah, the code. I have the code in the GitHub. Um, where am I at here? Um, there we go. If anyone wants to see it, I'll include this. Um, but it's just uh, PS Sherpa desk in my GitHub. Uh, but I will include this in the link. Oh, I guess I don't need to comment that out. Okay. 
Cool. Yeah, all freely available, all licensed under the MIT license. All righty then. Okay, so let's uh, now that we've, we can get our API key. Now let's work on getting, uh, doing our basic invoking our API call. So from what I remember, okay, I'm gonna close this window. I had open on the side because it keeps bringing me back to that. From what I remember, from glancing through. Yes, uh, from glancing through their documentation, the first thing we have to do is to get the our organizations and instances. A, a, okay, I'm not going to explain this from an expert standpoint. I'm going to explain this from someone who read the documentation kind of once. Um, so essentially, each account can be associated to multiple organizations, and each organization can have multiple instances. And the way they're... API works is it requires you to tell it what organ instance you're using on each call. And so the first thing we have to be able to do is to retrieve our orgs and instances so we know which one to work with when we make that call. So again, this is gonna be a boring task before we can actually work with the API, but at the same time, any API you work with is gonna have its quirks or at least any the API that I've worked with. I guess I can't speak for all of them, but okay. So basic authentication in the format X colon. So you see, see here, here I can zoom this in. Uh, it's another weird thing. So basic authentication in the format of um, X colon API token in the request. Okay, cool. So that uh, isn't too bad. Oh. You got, am I still there? Supposedly, okay, maybe it was my eye that was having issues. Uh, okay, you yeah, know it says everything's fine. Never mind. Okay, so, so I guess maybe we should keep all of these, uh, all of the weird uh, calls separate from our standard invoke. So I will create a new file called get Sherpa desk orgs. Uh, no, no, no. We'll call it meta. Data. We'll call it metadata. That makes more sense. Okay. And I may come back at some point. I may come back at some point and change this, but this is what makes sense to me right now. As I get into it, I mean, things might change. We'll see. Uh, so, parameters for the Git Sherpa Desk metadata. Um, we need the API key. Equals, nope, we won't put an equals there for now. Okay, so, and so one thing I have learned, and keep in mind I'm not, not a web developer by any means, um, is that one of the notations, so this notation here, uh, HTTPS, um, and you have the username colon password in basic authentication. So when you're using curl, you can actually express it like that. Uh, but the equivalent of this in PowerShell uh, is having a header with the authorizations uh, equal to basic space, kind of like we had before. I'll, 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 I gotta stop talking, I'll just show you how that works. Uh, okay, so first of all, our base URI is, well, actually, what do you need to call it the base URI? I'm just gonna go invoke rest method URI. Using single quotes, because there's no variables in this one. Uh, method is get and, and headers is going to be okay. So headers. Uh, so we have the like I was saying, the authorization equals using double quotes this time, basic space, and then um, so x colon API token. So a lot of times. I, like I said, I don't know if it's every time, but from what I can remember, it ends up it has ended up being every time. Um, when they say just straight API key the, in the basic author basic authentication, it means that it's actually uh, base64 encoded. And yeah, I learned that one the hard way. I spent a lot of time on that. So that's if you're not familiar with this topic, that's very valuable knowledge. Otherwise, it's probably something you already knew. Okay, so. We have uh, x colon and then API 
API key, sweet. So that's going to be our auth equals, or we can we can actually let's let's make this make more sense and say encoded auth equals, and then we'll call encoded auth sweet. Okay. So authorization. Um, did it say something about what the response was? So response is JSON. So we're going to do a test. So uh, on retrieving, here we can actually delete that out there. Uh, retrieving the API key earlier, I had an accept header in there, even though it wasn't a, uh, specifically, didn't say anything about it actually needed to be there. Here, just to keep everything standard here, we'll take off the quotes. Um, so I'm going to try it with, with and without this, uh, just for my own curiosity. And... Okay, so let's, um, oh, and the response is key name instances. Okay, sweet. Okay, so um, let's let's run this. Uh, so I called it get Sherpa desk metadata. Okay, API key is r.api underscore token. And I'm actually going to assign this to a variable just so I have the output. It worked the first time. Okay. Okay. So yeah, we do need to make sure and accept send that accept header. Okay, because otherwise you see we got this nice. Um, uh, I'm not sure what the correct nomenclature is for that type of output. I don't know JavaScript, HTML something. It's a nice web response. Uh, okay, so let's do that again, and this time our meta should be sweet. There we go. Okay. So here you can see that my organization is just called How IT, my business name, uh, and the key, it's got the key. I'm pointing on the screen as if you guys can see that. <laughs> um, it's got the key, and then under instances, I've got one instance. I, I'm really simple um, usage of this apparently. Uh, I only need one organization and one instance, uh, but the API API supports a, uh, multiple, so we have to be able to we have to have that information. So okay, first thing, first. Um, or something else that's bugging me in the get trim desk. I'm gonna get rid of that quote because it doesn't need to be there. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and get these two now. Retrieves user metadata. No, no, let's call it orgs and instances. Orgs and instances. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, so, um, but if I remember correctly, what's, so we can, oh, we can create orgs if we wanted to. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to get into that. Most of the stuff I'm doing here today is probably just going to be all the getting data. Okay, so, yeah, so this is where it gets complicated. Uh, it, for this API specifically, so you notice, uh, so it's going to use basic authentication. We got the org key dash instance key colon API token. And that's all going to be base64 encoded, I'm assuming. Well, I guess basic authentication is. Uh, is. So um, so let's get this rolling. So yeah, the invoke Sherpa desk, this is going to be its own. We're going to keep the get metadata and API keys, get that separately. Uh, so let's say call it function invoke the desk API call okay so this is where we actually need to be able to accept our organization our instance and an API key and the resource whoa we're starting off really complicated here so resource uh, and uh, just to be clear the resource in this case is going to be uh, for instance on this call be slash tickets. Uh, so I'm just having that set so we can call from our, our different uh, member commandlets as well. All right, so string organization. I'll be nice and use the full name there. String instance. Did I say there was instance? Oh, yeah, yeah, key, API key. Okay, cool. So, um... And at some point, there probably will be, I don't know, multiple ways to call this. So we'll probably have parameter sets. In fact, 
what I really like to do for these things is to store all of the, the API keys, uh, the API key as well as other metadata, necessary metadata like the org and the instance uh, in a, a file or the registry. Uh, uh, but until we get there, I'll leave them as separate um, primers. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna copy paste this again. Okay, so invoke sure for desk, boom, boom, boom. Oh, forgot the dollar sign. Okay, and so this is where we need to say, um, was it org dash instance? I think that's what, yeah, org dash instance. So we're going to say organization dash instance, and it was colon uh, API key. Okay, so we are getting the right underline, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, escape that colon. Okay, so encode it off. So now we have header equals. In fact, I can just do this. Copy and paste it from the old one. Okay, and I'm going to leave the except here because I found that it does actually need that. Um, okay, so then we're going to say invoke rest method. Ah, which reminds me, we also need a string method. And for right now, I'm going to put a validate set on this and just say get. Like that's the only option it currently supports, but it will support more potentially. So method URI. Oh, we also need to say the base, what I like to call the base URI. And there's a, I think there's a URL versus URI debate here, but I'm not going to get into that. Uh, so HTTPS API.SherpaDesk.com. I think that's it. Okay, so then what the URI for the call is going to be is base URI slash resource. If I could type. And we're going to use double quotes for that because I learned my single quote lesson already. And then headers is going to be header. Okay, so what we should be able to do now, well, to test it, yeah, let's, let's just let's do that. Okay, so let's do a test. Okay, so uh, invoke Sherpa desk API call. Okay, so we want uh, resource, we're gonna say tickets method get, uh, so org is gonna be uh, and this is the org key, so the metadata variable from before dot, I'm going to scroll up, uh, key. And the instance is meta dot instances, ooh, in, okay, instances zero dot key, because I only have one instance, and in case you have, whoops, sorry, in case you had multiple, it might be a little different. Uh, so we need org, and the API key is in the R dot API key token variable. Okay, so quick comment. When this module is done, these types of commands will not need to be typed because we'll make it a lot easier. Like I hate um, be having to make a standard call and typing out all of these parameters. But let's see if that works. Wow, okay. Uh, that worked the first time. Okay, so you can see I've got actually a, a couple of test tickets in here I created so that we would be able to um, do some testing. And I believe one of them even should have some time on it. Uh, okay, so cool, they got a tech ID so we can track multiple texts, a user ID, we can probably, so we can probably get users out of the API as well. Uh, created time, updated time. Ah, total hours. Yeah, check that out. That's easy. So that'll be easy. Uh, we, well, yeah, I assume it'll be easy anyway. I shouldn't say it will be easy because I don't know. Okay, so let's go ahead and commit that. Initial API call. Uh, and so typically, for uh, APIs that have things like 
pagination and stuff when they would produce a lot of items but only send a certain number for each each send uh, you would only have to build it in build the pagination once into this invoke call and I'm pointing at the screen again like you guys can see uh, we only have to do it once uh, and so that's why I like having this invoke API call commandlet separately um, and I I like to emphasize that because I didn't always do this and I spent a lot of time on other things that you shouldn't have to do all right, so I'm going to say get Sherpa desk tickets ps1 okay so let's make one to get those tickets without having to all have all that junk um so get Sherpa desk ticket function get Sherpa desk. so I imagine that uh, if we submit this with no parameters what it's going to do is to retreat, return all of the tickets like we saw earlier. So I'm going to say, so actually, eh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to st steal my thunder here. Okay. So, oh, except that's not, it's not within scope. Okay. That, so organization, hmm. So here's an interesting dilemma. So if I develop this module for me, which would just support one organization and one instance, then I can hard code them if I wanted. Uh, but I hate hard coding, so we're not going to do that. But um, what I want to do here is to have a way for the commandlets to automatically pick up, we'll call it a current working organization and current working instance. Hmm, that's an interesting idea. And so what we should, what I want to be able to do is say string organization. So I'll, I'll have organization there as a uh, typed parameter. And the same thing with instance. And then API key probably as well. I can't think of a reason not to. So we're going to leave it in there for now. Uh, let's see, method get, since this is a get, yeah, method, method gets. And tickets, that's not going to change, so I'm going to leave that hard-coded. Uh, so we want string organization, string instance, string API key. But the I my goal would be to be able to make this get Sherpa desk ticket call without any parameters, uh, without hard-coding anything. So... good way to do that I'm, I'm, I'm thinking here maybe I'll have to come up with something in the meantime let's try this so get Sherpa desk just to see if this works ticket uh, organization is going to be meta dot I think it was ID we'll find out we'll see what an error looks like if this doesn't work instance Meta dot instances zero dot ID and then API key is going to be R dot API token. Okay, org instance not correct. Okay, so let's meta. Oh, it's dot key dot key. Object reference not sent to. Okay, so I, okay. Instances. Oh, okay. This, they're both key. Okay. Okay. All right. So that works. Uh, I'm going to come up with a workaround. For storing that org instance and API key. Uh, yes. Okay. So, yeah. Sorry. I got an idea. So here's... Uh, Sherpa desk auth config ps one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do um, is to create uh, an environmental variable that has those stored in it, and then each of these uh, member commands are just gonna reference that environmental variable. So, uh, new Sherpa desk auth config. Oh, probably should declare it. That's usually good. 
Okay, so, um, so we can actually, yeah, we can actually do this without any parameters. Foreign defaults in a module scoped variable. So that is probably a better idea. Uh, but the, sorry, I'm, I'm thinking, because right now I've just got all these separate and I haven't done the build yet, so I could just skip ahead and do the build. Um, remind me again, module scoped variables, that's, is that, does the global within a module file, does that, is that, I always forget the scoping for variables. So if I do module, let's see, auth config, does that work as a module scoped variable? Simon Wise. Oh, the script. That's right. Okay, sweet. Sweet. Okay, so. Ah, so actually, yeah, you're right. No, that would, yeah, we can, we can skip, skip this whole, this whole, this whole function. Uh, and what we can do is when we do a get Sherpa desk metadata so we can say response equal well okay so that that's a, n another issue what if someone's working with this with multiple instances does it first set the in the first instance as default so we would still need a set off config hmm but i do like the script my ver is that that doesn't you're not exposing your api key in a global variable or an environmental variable, which makes more sense. Good call. Okay, so we're going to see if we can make that work. I'm just thinking of the best way to do that. Okay, so we can pretty easily, uh, for the key, switch the get API key, so say response equals, and say script. And I'm gonna call it. Uh, I'm gonna call it uh, not just auth config. Well, no. If it is if it is script scope, then yeah, auth config would make sense in this case because it's scoped to just this module. Perfect. Okay. So I, I like that idea. Uh, so script auth config equals. And remember the response was. Uh, I don't remember. It was API underscore token. Yeah. API underscore token. And then we can also, oh, okay, yeah, let's do, let's do that, let's do that. Okay, and then have another, have a pass through switch on the get Sherpa desk API key. Uh, and so if someone wants it output, they can, if, okay, if someone wants it output, they'll use the pass through and it'll output it just like you would expect. Oh, there's a for saying if a switch has value. Is it uh, commandlet dot nope ps? And I'm okay. I'm 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 failing. There's a there's a, a built-in variable that uh, will tell you if that's in there. Give me a second. Look it up, guys. I'm blanking, uh, but I just used it. Uh, in the, uh, no, not this one, uh, in the Airtable, uh, module, okay, give me a second here, uh, let's see, yes, oh, pass through dot is, okay, yep, okay, yeah, yeah, there you go, faster than what was I, I was, uh, Fine. Thanks, Simon. I appreciate it. Okay, so if pass through is present, then we'll also we'll just do response.api underscore token, and we'll just straight output it. We don't need to do the object. Okay, sweet. So, so that auth config now gets that that uh, the, the uh, API token. Or wait, wait, no, no. Okay, so that auth config needs to be an object. It shouldn't just be a, the API token because we also want to track the default organization instance. Okay, that is a good point. So auth config dot maybe dot token. So we will need to declare 
interesting. In the module file, the auth configs, we have the right um, properties. So let's just say, I'm just going to call this, I'm just going to be really generic and just call it API key <laughs> for the auth config. Uh, okay, cool. So then what we can do, uh, so get the Sherpa desk meta. So what I'm going to do to keep things easy for now is, oh, we can actually do auth. So I will have to build this when we do the testing here further on if we want this. So auth config dot API key. So that's, that is what I really like there. Okay. Uh, okay. So for the response, uh, what did the response look like? I'm working in the, the meta and the get Sherpa desk metadata. So the response. Okay. So I think by default, uh, what I'm going to do is for these, uh, auth config is to uh, by default have it reference the first uh, the first org and the first instance dot I'm gonna call it working organization that sounds like it makes sense uh, we're gonna say response dot Oh, so I actually don't know what that would look like with multiple objects. Okay, so we're just gonna, yeah, we'll just say, I'm assuming it would come back as an array and we can just do this and then script auth config dot instance equals response zero dot instances zero dot key okay so okay so now we're going to test my build script that i've already set up so we can actually err so we can actually test this um oh uh passer 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 let's do a passer here as well all right then we'll say if Pass through dot is present. And we'll just output the well, I'll output the raw response. I don't see any reason why not to, unless we were to come up with a class that was yeah. We're not gonna do that. <laughs> okay, which ones have I not saved? It's telling me I haven't saved. Okay, we're gonna skip that auth config for now. I think I'm gonna have a, a set auth config. Yeah. Well, yeah, actually, that would probably make sense to have a set in case we want to switch it. Uh, get your desk API. Oh, I'm going to save this too. All right, and before I commit those, I want to do a build. Um, and I think I have the build set to source. Okay, sweet. So we're going we're gonna to test my my build script. I cannot find paths. Oh, uh, I have generated a, uh, a manifest file. Okay. Um, New manifest. Oh my goodness. Module manifest. Okay, so we're gonna say dot slash uh PS sorry, I was looking for the name of it. Uh Sherpa desk dot PSD one. Okay, so sweet. So we gotta do squeed. Let's say D. Nope, probably should just leave it as my name. It's a little easier to track down that way. Okay, we're just gonna, this is really simple. Bam, okay, we'll call that good. And PS Sherp Dash, nice. Okay, build. Oh, you know, I just thought of, is I, Oh, okay. So I actually wanted to dump that in source, not in its own folder. Actually, I'm going to be even, even a little smarter about this. Yeah. Watch me edit my build in the middle of trying to do a, uh, <laughs> to work on an API. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go slash build and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that to uh, we're just going to do new folder, or not, not new folder there, new folder. Yes, 
move. I promise this will all make sense in a minute. Oh, it's not going to find that. Cannot find. Okay, so we'll actually we'll just copy that back. That's not a big deal to have there. Yeah. Okay, so now if we take a look here, I think we probably grabbed. Oh, I grabbed all my my comments. Okay, the auth config doesn't actually do anything. Okay. All right, so let's. All right, so now we should be able to say get Drupa desk API key. And this should set it to my auth config. API key cannot be found on this object. Verify the property. Okay, so we have to declare that. Let's see. Declare the, sorry, the. Uh, our auth config module scoped variable. Uh, so I'm actually going to, you know what? I'm actually going to do that um, in the get Sherpa desk API key since it, every time you do that, it's with a new API key. And so that should be reset anyway. Okay. API key equals, and we'll say, first close that off and then say, Working organization. Working instance equals. Okay. So that should let us that should let us actually work with that variable now. Remove module. Yes, sure. Actually, you know what I'm going to do is temporarily add this to my build. OK, so that we can do this a little quick and easier. OK, uh, so now if we get Sherpa desk API key, put in my email address. So now we should be able to, well, actually, we wouldn't be able to see this. But if we get the metadata too, I'm not trying not to get ahead of myself here, get Sherpa Desk metadata, that should work without any, right? Without any metadata, yes. OK, so now the auth config, we'll have to have a get auth config too, so we can actually see what our current working org is. So now our git Sherpa, oh, I didn't, ah, we're to rebuild. Okay, but we can go auth config dot working organization. And we can say instance equals auth config dot working instance equals auth config dot API key, oh, without the dollar sign. Okay, sweet, so I think this will actually be really good. All right, so it's saved. Let's do a quick build, and it should remove and re-add the module. And so now, if we go get Sherpa Desk API key, now well, let me really make sure I get my email typed out right these times. Okay, so now if we go get Sherpa Desk metadata, so now if we go get Sherpa Desk. Object reference not set to an instance of an object. Okay, so let me make sure that I set. Let's see, get the metadata. Oh. Dang it. Something little. Give me a second while we authenticate. Ah, okay, that is pretty sweet using that uh, that uh, m uh, module scoped variable for those that saw what I did there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and commit 
Um, let me expand this out a little bit. Get API key, get metadata, get the ticket, and not the auth config. All right, now uses a uh, uh, module variable for auth info. Okay, sweet. That's awesome. Um, oh, this one is just my my temp manifest. And let's, so the new Sherpa desk auth config, that's gonna go away since we build it within our mod, our other uh, commandlets. Yeah, that was a good idea, by the way. Thank you. Uh, and then, whoop. what did I change in the build? Was that just the adding the last two lines? And, oh yeah. Okay, just want to make sure. Okay, first build. Okay, boom. And let me do a refresh over here in GitHub. All right, I'm pushing that all up if anyone wants to look at it. Well, it's fresh. Okay, sweet. Okay, so that uh, that's actually solves that problem. Um, so now, so we can get the tickets. So one of the cool things, I don't know if it's a cool thing actually, one of the things um, about working with an API is a lot of times when you get a lot, when you get a list of data like for these tickets, it may not have all the information in it. And so a lot of times they'll have a, uh, let's look here. So get many objects, get one object. So uh, the ticket slash ID. Uh, so if you want to specify an ID of a ticket, we can get usually get more information. I don't know if that's the case here, uh, but I do want to be able to support that in case that does come up. So that's where we're going to add commandlet binding default parameter set name equals all tickets. And actually, you know what, at some point it will, all, yeah, it also has filtering. I'm not going to get into the filtering for now, uh, but I'll set us up so we can do that. Uh, so we're going to say all tickets. And what we're going to do is parameter. Parameter set name. No, actually, that those three don't have any parameter set names. Okay, so instead, what we're going to say is ID. Is it is it ticket ID? Is that what that is? Oh, is it the key or the ID? Interesting. Okay, well... Um, since the organization and the instance were both keys, that was the property name, I'm going to assume it is key in this case as well. And so in that case, what the URI actually is going to be, so it's still going to be tickets for the resource, but it's going to be slash. Okay, so what we want to say is resource equal, or sorry, if uh, ps commandlet dot parameter set name equals oh wait a second interesting uh, I always forget about this as well um, so if I have uh, three so if I have so this this parameter is going to be parameter set name equals by I by key so if the rest of them are all not unnamed, so maybe I shouldn't have that there. Okay, then we're gonna get rid of that for now. Because um, I can never remember if you have um, three keys, or, or if you have parameters with no parameter set and you want the, that to be default with no parameter set, I always forget the nomenclature is for that, so we're gonna skip it for now. So if parameter set name equals by key, uh, then the resource is actually going to be actually we can start with resource equals tickets and then if the name equals by key then we can say resource equals resource slash key yeah okay and then we need to say resource equals resource okay sweet Um, yeah. Okay, so let's see how that works. 
Uh, oh, actually, I gotta build the whole thing again. So what I'm gonna do here? Oh yeah, actually, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna save my credentials so I don't have to keep typing them in. Equals get credential. So every time I have to reauthenticate and rebuild that auth config variable, I can actually do it. Um, so actually, what we're gonna do is uh, rebuild it and say get Sherpa desk API key credential credential get Sherpa desk oh not API key desk meta okay so now we should be able to say get Sherpa desk tickets so we can get all of them let me oh, get this to go away let me expand this up a little bit uh, and now if we actually let's whoops I'm, I'm going to assign the output of that with all of them to just the tickets variable so I want to say get Sherpa desk ticket and I'm going to specify a key by looking at my tickets zero dot key I want to see what this ha <laughs> sweet okay so that so this does return a lot more data if we specify just a single ticket uh, by the ID. Uh, so you can, whoa, yeah, wow, a lot of, a lot of information. Wow, okay. So we can, I, I don't have anything, to, I, don't, I don't know what to do with all this information at this point, um, but, oh, okay, time, oh, whoa, check that out. Okay, so let's, okay, this is pretty sweet, time logs. Time key, administrator, type consulting. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, but that's not the ticket I put time on, though. Okay, I did put time on one of these tickets. I want to see what that... Oh, okay, so that is the one I put time on. Oh, so there's the hours. Okay, I thought one of these down here was the hours. The Oh, the invoice hour late. Oh, I'm, I'm zero bucks an hour, guys. Uh, all right. Okay, sweet. That's awesome. Okay, so that is... Let's see. Let's see now. Well, not new now. It's a single ticket. Okay, so now we got times. So we can get time per ticket. So my goal, I kind of lost sight of it a little bit last time, so I wrote it down uh, in my comments here <laughs> that are committed into the repo now. Uh, but oh well. Okay, so we can now get the API key. We can authenticate. We can get tickets. And we can do so by storing that in a uh, module scoped variable. Thanks, Simon. And we need to be able to associate tickets to accounts. So let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, so in Sherpa Desk, and I'm just showing you this so it makes sense. Uh, their accounts, uh, and these are all, all example ones uh, that they have. I'm again, pointing at the screen like you guys can see it. Um, uh, so you can assign each ticket to different accounts I believe and and I, and I say I believe because apparently I work on the API before I actually uh, test the product but you know this way all right, let's create a new ticket uh, this way I can actually um, work on uh, the API without having any data in here which is what I wanted to do uh, okay cool so account oh awesome so I can actually end user you don't have any, oh, we can put users per account. Oh, that's sweet. So I'm just going to say, make me the end user here. We're going to keep it simple. I don't need to go through all this, this stuff. I'm going to call it technology support. This is the camping test. Here is some description data. Okay, cool. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to do too much here, but what I want to do is I want to see if we can actually out of the, actually, no, it doesn't even matter. I was going to say out of the UI find the ticket key honestly I don't care about that right now okay but we can can we comment one hour nice okay I'm not gonna put it I'm not gonna put a percent complete um, add an hour okay add response and update working one and users is myself please select appropriate task type we'll call it we'll call it desktop support Okay, cool. So now we have one hour on this new ticket with our separate uh, account. 
So let's get, oh, I'm typing up in the, there we go. I'm gonna zoom this in a little bit. Okay. So we go get Sherpa desk ticket. So I don't have the ID for that, but what I can do is, so okay, we are getting the class name. That was, we know it was tech support. Um, I wanna see if it has the account, account name. Okay, sweet. So we can get, and at some point, I'll add in the filtering to the commandlet natively, but for now we can just use the where object dot account name equal, or we're gonna say like, cause I don't remember what the account name was, camping. Okay, cool, so we got, this looks like, oh, I just got the email notification I had a ticket. Okay, none of these are actually filtering. There you go. Okay. And I've seen this say seen this happen working with APIs. I have no idea why, but sometimes the straight output doesn't work with where object unless you uh, put the command inside of parentheses. I don't have an answer for why. I just found out that that happens. So maybe it's something to do with the the data type and I don't know. Anyway, so we, we can filter by accounts because that's what I wanted to be able to do. So we can associate tickets to accounts through the API uh, and get time works. We can do all of that already. But before we call this a success, I saw in their docs, the time log, there is a time. Um, and like I said, they don't have a lot of a lot of data in their API, so I'm gonna be guessing. Okay, sweet, I'm looking, let me zoom that in for anyone watching. So I'm looking here in the uh, the example request for their time resource, and you can specify an account and a project. Interesting, type equals recent. Limit, hmm. I wonder if you could say, so what, I, what I'm trying to do is, my use case is to um, get a list of all tickets for a specific account, so a client in this case, and then all of the ones in the last, for a month time span, I do my invoicing monthly, uh, and then, uh, put that into Airtable and from Airtable, that's where I <clears throat> build my invoices from. So I'm, I'm trying to think of the best way to do that is it gonna be through this time resource or through the tickets, because through the tickets, maybe we'll just build in the filtering now. In fact, I'm thinking that it's probably, it's gonna be in my best interest. Uh, Cause we can do by status, um, looking at filtering for the tickets here. Um, status equals role limit. Do they have an account? Could get it by account. We can do posts, status. Interesting, okay, so they don't support getting tickets by account, that's unfortunate. Interesting. So the time log, well, let's, here, let's, let's just, let's build in this get your this time. Let's get that going first. Um, what is the change that needs to be committed? Let's do a save there. Did that change? No, it did not. Is this just a recent build? It is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's let's just get uh, do a get Sherpa desk time dot ps one. And the nice the nice thing about having that invoked separately is we can literally do this. Uh, resource <clears throat> time, was it time or time log? Nope, just time, okay. Resource time, method get, and then organization. Oh, you know what, I can just, I can just do this. We're gonna cheat here and just copy and paste. But where am I at? Get it time. Uh, does 
time have a key? I don't think so. Or is that just really a really big meta question? Okay, so organization is organization. Instance is instance. And API key is API key. And the reason I'm specifying them all in each of these commandlets is so that if somebody wanted to come through and for each commandlet specify a separate org and a separate instance, they can. So they're not hard, they're not hard coded in any of the member commandlets. So that I mean that, that's why I'm going taking the time and writing them out here like that. Okay, so then let's get that built in. So get Sherpa desk API key cred is my credential object. Get Sherpa desk metadata. Okay, so now we should get get Sherpa desk time. I have no idea what this is gonna do. No, not ticket time time. Sweet. Okay. Oh, so this is all the time entries added. In, so that's that's the most recent one. Do they have a date time stamp on here? Time I. Okay, so they track all the entries by ID. Okay, so that's useful. We can associate to a ticket ID. How do we get a ticket ID if we use the key? Okay, so let's let's settle that. Because uh, remember, the ticket had both a key and an ID. So can we specify an ID instead of a key? Ah, so that. <laughs> It doesn't matter. They have a key and they have an ID and you can retrieve them by either. Okay. That's good. That makes it a lot easier. Uh, I guess ticket. Okay. So I'm looking at the time. Oh, sure. But I want to see account name. Oh, that's for my first ticket. I thought I was looking at the, the first one returned, which is okay. So I can't associate that to an account. Account ID, ticket type, test type, stop, start. start. Oh, here we go. Date. Yeah. Ah, 1905, is that today? It is today, yes, in UTC. Okay, cool. So I'm minus eight, so in reality that was at 1105, sweet. Cool, so that would let me filter. So can I use the API to filter time? Well, actually first, I gotta jump ahead of myself, get sure it is time. Okay, uh, so uh, let's 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 see if we can get this to actually filter. So we can we can see here it's got a bunch of parameters. We're gonna test my remembrance of uh, working with APIs here. I believe the parameters can be passed. They don't have to be passed in the the URI. They can be passed as a body. We're gonna test that out. Okay. Oh, uh, so let's get sure desk time. So what I want to well, let me make that go away. So what I want to do is we're going to start with just testing for an account, account name specifically. And we're going to say body, we'll be really generic here, equals. Uh, so actually, yes, okay, no, I'm, now I remember this will work. So we're going to say, okay, so the params is account and it's actually really important that we uh, I, I think it's really important that if if it's a lowercase a in account that it needs to be lowercase a in account uh, in the request as well uh, so we're gonna we're gonna stick to that account equals account name okay and then this is actually we're gonna do a join I believe We're gonna do a test here because I don't remember. <laughs> okay, so okay, obviously I don't remember. Um, oh, yeah, that's why I did a hash table, not a. Uh, not an array, so I believe this would work though. Count. Oh, eh. I, 
believe this will work. Simon expression is not valid. Okay, because it's not a hash table. Okay, okay. Now I'm just making stuff up at this point. Okay, so maybe maybe that's not what I thought it was. Okay. Uh, okay, so we got a hash table. Now we're gonna test my my hash table skills apparently. Okay, so I'm trying to think if I've done this before to save myself some time, and I think I have. Oh, I have. Uh, now that I think of it. Okay, so we're gonna look at some of my other code. specifically this one. So I've got a module for with eBay API. So I've got an eBay order. So I actually have, uh, so you have filtering built into this one. Oh, I just joined them as a string. Okay, so I didn't actually use the body. We'll do that, we'll do that. It's not that hard, I guess. Okay. Okay, so we've got account name. We can actually get really creative here. Um, so account name, tech account. Okay, or tech account project. So let's just go, let's just add them all in there. String. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is, we have a bunch of if statements. <laughs> all right, so if account name dot, okay, so it's just the, it's the switch that has, uh, the e is present. Okay, so account name. So if it has value, there we go. Uh, let's see. Oh, actually, we're gonna say string uh, parameters equal. Or that's kind of ambiguous. String parameters equals. Okay, so string parameters equals plus equals. I don't remember if this works with strings or not, so we're gonna find out. Uh, so we have account per, ooh, I almost got bit by single quotes again. Uh, account equals account name. Wait, hold on a second. I just got a better idea. We are gonna build an array. We are gonna build an array. But I'm gonna have our parameters equals, okay, yeah. Or have that actually be an array. Okay. So then our parameters plus equals account equals. So this is gonna be an array of strings, and we're gonna join them with the ampersand at the end. Okay, so if tech our parameters plus equals double quotes again, tech equals tech. And then if what was the last one? Project, not profile project. Um, R parameters plus equals project equals project. Okay. So then my str parameters, it's going to equal R parameters join Oop. Okay, make sure that's actually a string. Okay, so the interesting thing is testing if the array has value. Actually, if it, okay, no, 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 no. So what we'll do is then say if str parameter, so this has value, we're gonna, oh, why did I do it that way? So if that, str parameters has value, then our resource is actually going to be uh, slash, oh, I can't remember if, it's a, if it is slash question mark or just, it's just question mark. So I'm, I'm looking at right here. So the resource time and then question mark followed by the parameters. Okay. So it's going to be question mark str parameters. Okay. So This should work. This should work. The only way to know for sure, though, is of course to test it. Um, did I actually? Oh, good, good, good. I did commit that before I made all these changes. Okay. So we're gonna build it. We're gonna do some testing with it. So we're gonna say get Sherpa desk. 
API key credential is cred, and then we're gonna say get Sherpa task meta data. Okay, sweet. Okay, so now if we say get Sherpa desk time, time, not ticket, and we say, all right, well, first of all, it should still work to get everything without any parameters. Okay, it does. Uh, and then we say, let's say account. I wonder if it works on partial names. No. Input string was not in the correct format. Oh. And that's actually from the API itself. Interesting. Okay. So, resource. I wonder what str parameters looked like. And this is where command let binding. You should always start with verbosity. <laughs> See our parameters, join our parameters. Okay. Or did I, is there something? It is joined with it is joined with the ampersand. So in reality, that's just going to be a. So what what it should look like. Well, what it should look like and what it actually does, we'll find out. <laughs> okay, so let's. Can we do that? We just have we can okay sweet okay so what I'm gonna do is oh verbose and actually see what it looks like count equals does there need to be single quotes in there or does that need to be encoded oh whoa well, count equals zero okay that that's that's Okay, actually this, okay, I think I, okay. So I think, I'm assuming input string was not in correct format. Since we've got a string to number in there, I'm assuming that they're expecting a an integer and not a string, which means that we need to get the ID for each of our accounts, which would actually make more sense. <laughs> Okay, so it means we need to get a count. Uh, I think. Let's do it. Okay. So we will come back to the get Sherpa desk time and not commit that change so we know it works. So get Sherpa desk account plus one. Okay, function. Okay, so what I'm going to guess is we can probably use this same parameter. Uh, parameter set. Uh, sorry, I'm staring right at it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'll leave it calling it key. I might come back and change that to ID because that kind of bugs me. Uh, okay. Um, so get Sherpa desk account. So we should be able to say invoke. Sherpa desk API call method get resource is just a oh accounts plural okay oh so they don't don't appear to have a get a singular account so let's okay no they, they according to this documentation they do like I said before this documentation is Mediocre. Leaves much to be desired. Okay, so resource. Uh, it's just going to be accounts. Well, actually, we are going to do the same thing as before. Wow. Actually, check this out. We can just simply copy. It's going to be really lame here. And just copy-paste. Because... Having that invoke API call separate is just brilliant in my opinion. I saw that in another module and I've been using it ever since. I think it was in the Adams Airtable module. Uh, if you guys work with Airtable, there's a really good PowerShell module for it. Uh, okay, uh, so accounts, it, 
you know, this should just work like that. Uh, okay, so let's do a build. And for those of you not familiar with doing a build like this, uh, it essentially just grabs all my all the script files that I've got in uh, in this source directory. So any classes, any private or public functions, and builds them into a module. So that's what I'm looking at here. Uh, so I should be able to. Oh, Cisco. Hey, good question. So I. Uh, so th this isn't actually TechSnip specific. Um, I'm uh, this is for my own business. So we're not doing end user support for through TechSnips. No, thank you. <laughs> uh, to put that in context, um, I uh, have I run my own business. I'm also the VP of content over at TechSnips, uh, where we produce technical training content. And oh, Veronica is watching as well. Sweet. Um, and we don't do end user support at TechSnips, just to clear things up for Cisco. Actually, you know, Cisco, we were going to set you up uh, to to be the the lead um, uh, uh, person that gets assigned all the tickets. I can't remember the name for that. Uh, you you okay with that? Great. Okay, sorry. Uh, so get your desk account. So this should. If it return all my accounts, it does. Sweet. Okay, cool. And these all have IDs, you'll notice. Oh, and the internal um, account is negative one. That's good to know. Okay, so now if we do get Sherpa desk time and say account name. Oh, so interesting point here. So I had this the parameter called account name, thinking that it was going to be a name. It's not, yeah, lead end user support engineer. <laughs> that sounds brilliant to force this go. <laughs> uh, so, so I use account name for the name of the parameter. We're not actually looking for an account name. We're looking for an account ID. Uh, and in this case, I did create a ticket for the Camping Supplies Incorporated. So if we go, if we get shared to sure desk time, okay, sweet. So that all makes more sense. Now, so get Sherpa Desk account or time. I'm going to switch this to account away from name. And I'm going to guess and say that since the documentation also had, go back to time log, also had tech as a zero and project as a zero, those are probably integers as well. I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm guessing because I, I don't know yet. Uh, but let's find out. Um, projects. We can probably get projects. Okay, cool. So we'll build a projects one since that's pretty easy to do. I don't see one on one for text though. So it calls it tech here. I wonder. I don't know what a profile is. I wonder what they consider that to be. I gotta get a drink. Well, I stew this over. Maybe it's an asset. Do they consider a tech to be an asset or a text asset? <clears throat> okay. Uh, I'm just going to quick scroll through here and see if we can find. <clears throat> oh. Oh, I got a PowerShell example. I've been doing all this work and. Oh, okay. No, it's. <clears throat> yeah, we already passed that, actually. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, okay. I'm gonna, just going to grab and start scrolling. This is really boring stuff. I want, oh, yes. Objects. This is what I was hoping for. Technicians. Yes. So we can probably do a get on technicians and get all of our technicians. That would be swell. Okay. Before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'm going to commit the time separate from the get account. Now gets... Time entries. Excuse me. And now it gets accounts. And for everyone that's uh, looking at the GitHub repo, I'm just pushing that up right now. Excuse me, I apparently burp after I drink water. Uh, okay, so let's do a new get Sherpa Tech. Sherpa Tech. Sherpa Desk text on PS4. 
her have we been I've been singular this whole time, so I'm gonna say tech.ps1. Okay, so Yeah, you know what? Like I said, the brilliant part about using that invoke um and that a separate invoke API call commandlet is you can do things like this. Da -da -da. Uh, except we'll change this to technicians. And it should work. Let's find out. Uh, I'm going to be really happy if it does. Okay, so we'll build the auth config. And then. We will say get Sherpa desk tech. <laughs> it does. I've got one. No, two. What? I have two technicians. Okay, well, one of them's just, I don't know, some system technician apparently. Okay. Uh, but we should be able to also say get Sherpa desk tech and say ID. Oh, their API doesn't support that. Okay, well, but you know what's really nice is they have this nice document, good error. I mean, this, oops, sorry, bumped the mic. Uh, this error makes sense, and I knew exactly what was wrong. So, cool. That's, I mean, that's a nice thing about, uh, or not, this, that's something that doesn't always, isn't always there in APIs, at least the ones that I've worked with. But what that does mean is I'm going to call this text, and we're going to get rid of the key and get rid of that as well. Okay, cool. Uh, and then what was the other thing? Projects. Okay, so oh, that build worked. And I'm and instead of assuming that I didn't mess something up, we're going to try that again. What did I? Did I get Sherpa Desk text? Did it not? Did I? Counts time. What? Okay, that didn't show up in the build for some reason. Let's uh, let's find out. Okay, I did now. Maybe the name didn't match up right. Okay, cool. So that still works. Okay, sweet. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and commit that. Now gets text. Okay, so the last thing, well, maybe not the last thing. The next thing is projects. And I'm assuming this one's probably going to be the same thing. Projects, projects. Oh, and this is even in alphabetical order. Oh, we, can, we got a lot of other things we could look at as well. Uh, if I had all day, maybe I'd sit and just keep working on this all day. But I do not. So let's get projects. Sherpa desk project. PS1. Okay. Let's see. And I'm going to assume again that we can get by individual project, but of course, we'll find out. So projects, right? Was that it? Projects. Okay, it is. Okay. Wow, this is getting really easy once we once we get all the, the base commandlets all figured out. Or at least to add simple versions of the new commandlets. So if we do get Sherpa Desk, we're on projects. So that returns zero. But I'm not actually sure if I don't even know if I, do I have some? I don't know. Uh let's find out. Um how do we do this? Okay, well I guess that's not a really good example because I don't even know what a project is in Sherpa Desk, let alone how I mean obviously I don't have any, so Okay. That was not not necessarily pointless, we didn't get an error, but it just that 
I don't know what to do with that information. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, the other thing, in fact, I, you know, for, for me personally, that's everything I need to do to get it going. But what I really want to also be able to do is let's try, let's see if we can figure out how to close a ticket. Because um, one thing that I have a bad habit of doing is leaving tickets open after I've finished working on them. Especially when you work for yourself and you don't have anyone else looking at your your uh, reports. <laughs> I end up closing a bunch at the end of every month. So let's see. Um, I thought there was a section. I'm scrolling back up to the top of the docs to see if... Oh, okay. So that looks like a JSON payload to me because I'm an well-versed in what JSON looks like, apparently. No, I... A wild guess. So let's... Let's actually bring this up and look at... Oh, okay, sweet. Okay, so it is format JSON. Uh, but that's probably... We probably have to set content type. Yeah, okay, so the content type... That's URL encoded, though. That's not... Okay, I'm a little confused. Uh, uh, JSON, params, body, wait, 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 content type, params format, what is this? A, maybe I should read this one instead. Format equals JSON. Header, form, no text equals IMG. Oh, okay. Action equal. Okay, so that's the information that it's sending. Well, we'll have to figure out how to make this work. Okay, so let's... Uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and commit project. Now get to projects. I don't know that that actually works. So I'm not able to test. But we'll do it anyway. Okay, so set Sherpa desk ticket. Okay, so... So this is one of the ones that we could get really crazy with the parameters and say all kinds of stuff, or we could accept, I got something in my eye, or we can accept um, uh, like a, a JSON string or a hash table converted to JSON. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna keep it simple and, oh, maybe this is where I should've been looking at. Body, count, class, initial, location, status, subject, tech. Okay. Um, I wish they had more examples. Oop, wrong one. Okay, so uh, tickets, action, action, merge. Oh, see more examples. See examples here. That's where we were looking. Okay. Um, potentially, oh, they do have, nice, filtering of tickets. Okay, okay, so I was complaining about their documentation. I just hadn't scrolled far enough down. Okay, so gets a list, so default two pages, 25. Okay, so that's what I was talking about, pagination. You can specify page two. So on the first set of data, they probably have something that indicates that there's an another page. Uh, okay, so what I want to do, I'm going to skip all this because um, if I find that I like this platform, I'll spend more time developing this. But what I want to do is I want to, you know, f get my use case working and go from there and share, you know, share everything uh, that I've got. Uh, so create update. Oh, okay. Okay. See, that tells you how much web development I do. Um, I didn't recognize that this was a post and not a put. And put apparently is for or wait, put, put and post. Okay, I'm going to sit here and ramble on about stuff that I know nothing about. Uh, okay. <laughs> so get updated tickets. So put tickets. So this, I'm assuming this is what they're putting. Is it posted updates and note type example action response? Change subject, post tech note, work pad, put ticket on hold. Okay, status on hold. Ah, no, close the ticket. They have an example for closing a ticket. Okay, so we're going to try closing a ticket with PowerShell. Okay, so we can 
we need to work with a ticket ID. So we're going to say string key and oh, we don't need to have a parameter set because we're going to work with one at a time, but we still do need all of this stuff as, <clears throat> as well. And since we are going to be doing a put, if you remember earlier, my so in the invoke, the API call invoke, um, I only set it to use to allow gets to start with until I added others in. Well, no, I've added another. I'm going to be adding another one in. One in. So we will uh, set the method to also accept put, and we're going to see if we make this work. Okay, so the uh, resource is going to be uh, tickets slash. Key. Oh, I'm going to get killed by my single versus double quotes again. Okay. Um, and then ultimately, we're going to be doing invoke rest method. Okay, I'm getting red lines all over the place. There we go. Invoke rest method, method, or no, 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 no. Invoke Sherpa desk API. There it is. API call method. So it doesn't, it doesn't want me to autocomplete as put because... I didn't have that in there last time I imported it. Okay. Resource is going to be resource. And organization is going to be organization. Instance is going to be instance, not input, instance. API key is going to be API key. Okay. Okay. So then the next thing is building that body. So I was working with another API last week i make it sound like i work with apis all the time I'm, I'm just doing this while i can automate some uh some stuff that i need to have automated um okay so in this one so i'm right now i'm uh, so i'm working with the pdf generator api last week um and i needed a body in json if i remember correctly so if body so body json okay so this in this case so i use the body parameter with invoke rest method and the body was a JSON string. So I have the content type here sent to application JSON. And there's some other authentication stuff specific to that API. So I believe that we should be able to do that with Sherpa Desk. Let's find out. So I'm going to say body equals. Wait, no. Yes, we can get convert that to JSON. Right? Yes. Okay. There it is. Okay. Uh, so, um, so we can be, let's see, so close, it needs a lot of information. So we, there's a couple of ways we can build these commands. We can either do it so that we accept this JSON string and we build it separately outside of the commandlet, or we can make it a lot easier, a lot more user friendly. And accept each of these again. I'm pointing at the screen here. Oh, I use my mouse. And accept each of these as a parameter. I kind of on the fence because that's going to be. It's obviously going to be more difficult to, to implement more parameters. Um, and it's kind of. Well, I wouldn't say it's outside of scope because it would make it easier in the long run, right? Okay. Uh, so let's try. I'm going to try just implementing status <laughs> string and status. Okay, I'd be willing to bet that they have a limited number of statuses, and so we could do a validate set. I ah, don't feel like doing that right now. Oh, um, so we can't, sorry, we can't hard code a body creation, but we can say body equals, right, body dot, and status. Oh, I forget how to work with hash tables. Or no, we can just do body. What? No, stop. Okay, there we go. Status, right? Equals. I think that works. And then we can say body convert to JSON. Well, we're going to find out because we'll have to do some testing. Okay. And then I believe here we can say 
Oh, I don't. I'm not. I don't accept body in my invoke call yet. So we're gonna say JSON body, and then we're gonna go here. And I, th you know, I think we can hard code content equals application JSON because I'm, I'm just gonna use that as the default uh, uh, format for the content. I believe we can just do that, and that's what content dash type. Oh, maybe it's not just content. So content dash type. And was it the T capitalized? It was in this one. Just because it is on that one doesn't mean it will be on this one, though. So let's. Oh, but they have a form. Uh, so we could look at the curl documentation for the form parameter. Okay, this is really boring. This is the part that I hate about doing this kind of stuff. Is all examples are in or for curl, and I am not familiar with curl. Okay, so dash form dash. There you go. Uh, curl emulate a filled in form using content type multi part form data. Oh, okay, so it's not content type application slash json like i want it to be at least in their example that doesn't mean that it doesn't accept json and maybe i'm just being optimistic because i want it to <laughs> okay because i have no idea how to format in in powershell how to format a multi-part slash form data but you know who might Google might know. Oh, I've even looked at it before. Uh oh. It should be pretty straight, straightforward. So it still is some sort of JSON data. Okay. Invoke REST method, content type. Oh, they. Oh, okay. So I didn't know that. Invoke REST method has a content type parameter. Um. So body is just fields, which is a hash table. In this case, they're calling it app info. I don't know if that works for, well, does, is that something that curl does? This is all new to me, guys. I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay, I have no well, okay, so let's let's think about this logically. So they're doing all separately, so it wouldn't make sense to have that app info. So I bet you it's just a it's just a hash table. Okay. Well, let's find out. That's the best way to do this is to just find out. Uh okay, so we're set Herbert Sherbert as ticket JSON body equals nope. We're going to be passing a hash table. Status equals status and the body JSON. Okay, and in this case, I'm going to just temporarily, we may come back and leave this or change this. Um, what was that? Multi-part form, something or other. I just want to make sure I get it. Uh, did I miss the content type somewhere? Oh, yeah. That yeah, was... Uh, Multi-part form data. Okay, so we're gonna set the content. We're gonna set the content type to the right thing here. Multi-part slash form data. But it's still gonna be a. Oh, okay. No, I'm I'm thinking about this some more here. Sorry, I'm thinking in my head. Can't think out loud all the time. So I wonder if specifying the content type as a parameter has invoke rest method. Format it that that way. Okay. Let's find out. Okay, so if so, actually, what I'm going to do is if method equals get, then we're going to have just this. Else, if method equals put, we're going to have this content type separate. I'm just going to copy this 
and paste it here, but we're going to say content type. Oh, well, I'm deleting things off screen. Whoops. Multi part form data. Okay, so does that. No, okay, just like that. Okay, so interesting to see if this works. Um, set Sherpa does ticket. So I'm only adding the status because I want to see if we can just close a ticket. Or er, close. Uh, was that an option for status? Uh, status is open. Or er, we were looking at their wiki status close. I wish they had all the example values and or all the possible values of these, but you know they don't. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and build this again. And I'll get my credentials all figured out. And what we'll do is we'll get Sherpa desk ticket. So we're going to get all of them. So what I want to do is I want to look at the specifically the one. And I'll have to, of course, add this in. Or did I add in filtering for Sherpa desk ticket? I guess maybe I just thought of it so much. Yeah, I just thought of it way too much. And I haven't actually done it yet. Okay, so we want, uh, we're going to cheat and just use this ticket ID right here. So we want to get set, or, well, actually, Let's get to the current status. Get Sherpa desk. Oh. Okay. And can we say open? Okay. So I wanted to want to check the status before we actually closed it, so that we know set Sherpa desk ticket. Uh, Status closed. Okay, moment of truth. Okay, okay. I did not expect no results. Okay, no, I didn't actually. I didn't actually do anything. Hmm. I expected it to do something, not just nothing. Okay, so set set super desk method put resources instance ih passed. Oh, oh my goodness. Because I renamed a variable and then didn't switch it in the call. Dang it. Okay, so we're going to redo that build. Build our auth config. Okay, so we're going to get, so right now it's currently open. So if we do a set. Oh. So this is probably going to be a little more complicated than I expected. 9538106. Yeah, we even get it a second. Okay, so I wonder if it just needs all that other data or if it's just not being sent correctly. I think we pass a... Oh, no. Another tidbit of information I said earlier. I should always add in the commandlet binding when you build your commandlets. Okay, uh, status equals... I don't know what verbose does if we pass it a right verbose pass it a hash table. Let's find out. Okay, we're gonna rebuild that. Uh, so I want to get some more information about what it is actually doing. Okay, so we'll do that, and we'll do our set. Ah, uh, just does hash table. Received nothing. Okay, put with zero byte payload. Okay, so that's useful information anyway. So I screwed something up. Uh, okay, so I did I did actually do a put. So if method equals put, it will come down to here. Content type, huh? Okay, I'm moron. We're not actually accepting a body yet. String body. That's why I had no payload. Body, body. Oh, it'll to string it. Um, which which part were you talking about there? I might have missed when you right when you said that. Oh, you're talking the oh you, the hash table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and a hash table dot to string is just the object name. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely right. I probably could have guessed that if I hadn't thought about it instead of just wanting to try it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, yeah, it does lag. I wonder, actually, you know what? I think there is um, a way to set it to be more 
real time uh, Twitch that is. I might have that turned off, unfortunately. Okay. Oh, okay, so let's try that now that I've got, actually have a body being passed. Uh, so I got a one byte payload and we received no, res well, one byte response. Was that a zero byte payload? Okay, so that's promising. So let's get the ticket dot status. It's still open. Okay, so maybe my workaround of sending it nothing or just the status was not a good idea. Let's just take a look here. Okay, so for the form, so user ID status. I wonder I wonder if the, the payload's just not form formatted correctly. I bet you that's is the case. Let's let's take a look here for the I want to I want to see if this does anything different for the body based on content type. No, I just want the copy content type. The body may also accept a multi-port part form data content object. So we could actually build this will facilitate the multi-part form data request. Okay. We'll be overridden by the contents of multi-part form data content object. Okay, so I maybe I just need to build the actual object. If this parameter is emitted, then the request plus post sets the content type to otherwise the content type is not specified in the call. Content type will be overridden when a multi-part form data content object is supplied. Gosh darn it. Okay, I'm I don't know anything about building multi-part form data contents, and I'm about out of time where I gotta I gotta get to some other things today, but what I what I really want to try is doing this. to JSON because I add, like like I was mentioning earlier I passed let's see uh, let's see I thought I oh, looking at uh, some other stuff I was working on last week yeah convert to JSON body so data is a hash table converted to JSON and I invoked the call and this is just this is another API separately, so who knows if this actually works. I just don't work a lot with APIs, and so when an API isn't well documented, it trips me up more than it might have trip up some others. Okay, so body, and I'm saying content type equals application slash JSON. So let's I'm gonna I want to try that uh, for convert to. Oh no, that is right, not convert from. Okay, I want to try that for this API specifically and just see what it does. Just because, I mean, that's that's about all I've got time for. Okay. So let's do a build on that. And we'll get my auth config variable built. And Okay, interesting. I brought a one byte response. Did I, I'm not hiding. I didn't do any, no, nope, didn't do anything with the output there. Whoa, huh. All right. So, so screw the multi-part form data. It actually worked with the format and its JSON. All right, well actually that's, that uh, makes me feel a little better. Because now I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ending this uh, stream on a bad note like I kind of felt like I was last time. Okay, so uh, before, oh, thank you, Veronica, appreciate it. Uh, before I actually close up here, let's. Oh, that's the new one. Okay, um, I'm gonna, I want to commit that build in case you guys want to grab the code or the most recent code because I might not remember uh, until later.
Uh, okay, so let's see now. Uh, just just sets ticket status. That's it. <laughs> I'll, ha I'll I'll come back and add more to it if I've got time later. Um, and this is the build. Um, current build. Build. It works mostly. Well, no, everything everything in it works. So I shouldn't say it works mostly. Everything everything in it works. Okay, sweet. Okay. Um, and I guess that that I mean that that about wraps up what I was working on what I needed to get done. I got everything done that I needed to, uh, so I'm feeling pretty good about it. Thank you guys to everyone that stuck around, uh, for folks that shouted that uh, that were chatting with me. Simon, I appreciate you help you picked up that uh, uh, the module um, scoped variable that was really useful. Uh, something I hadn't thought of. I. For some of the other API models I've done, I've stored data in the registry. Um, but the way the thing I like about this one is that this will work for PowerShell Core, and I'm just saying it's going to work. <clears throat> uh, okay, okay, you guys, you convinced me. One last, one last thing. I will switch my console over to PowerShell Core, and we're going to do a quick test because I imagine I I don't think anything I've done here is is uh, specific to Power Windows PowerShell. So import module. Okay, so we want to do get Sherpa task API key email. Get my email. Oh, this is also reminding me that I'll need to. I will need to um, clear out my reset my API key after this. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we got the API key get Sherpa desk. Um, what was it? Metadata. And for those of you who didn't catch the beginning, um, this is uh, this is what grabs the API key itself. And then Sherpa desk has this weird thing where they you have to specify the org and the instance for each call. So that's what get Sherpa desk metadata does here, actually. And that's what that output looks like. Uh, so we've got the the org key and then the instance key. Uh, so then. What's uh? So I'm testing in PowerShell Core. Get Sherpa desk ticket. So that works. Get Sherpa. Well, I, so if that works, I mean all the Git. Whoops, all the Git commandments should work. They do. Um. So let's. What I'm what I'm doing here is I want to look at one ticket that's currently open. Let's see. Oh, no, 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 no. I need to specify the ID. Key. Yeah. Okay. T. Let's see. Was that one dot ID status? Oh, wait. We can go. Sherpa desk ticket key dot ID. Oh. And we can actually make that even shorter just by going looking at status. That's all we care about in this case. Ah, sweet, it does. Okay. So this is also uh, works in PowerShell Core. So that's been something I've been trying to do. And that, uh, like I said, that module scope variable really made a difference. Otherwise, I would have been put in the registry. And we all know that how many operating systems have registries in them, just the Windows. All right, sweet. Um, thanks for tuning in. I'll have this up on YouTube. Um, uh, probably tomorrow since I used up my whole two hours. Uh, but yeah, thanks guys. Appreciate it. Uh, and of course I need to find my stream window. <laughs>